Namaste, everyone. Thank you to Kumar for thank you to Prasanaji for having me here. Um, I'm David Leo Sirwa. My spiritual name is Madhava, and uh, very excited to be here with you. I'm going to share my screen, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully, some magic. Okay, there's uh, Ganesh in the stars. And this is a poem that I wrote for uh, Fertile Brains, one of our first uh, readings that I joined in. Blue Pearl, Nila Bindu. In the sky of the mind, there is one blue star, a glow in the northern heavens, crown of the head space of consciousness. When December died, I woke in the blank dark of 5.55 a.m. and peacefulness pulsed in all the halls of my blood. Poetry poured out of the eyes in the palms of my hands, blissful tears of indigo ink. For a moment, all my eyes were open those in the soles of my feet, the eye of the heart, eternal witness, the thousand eyes in the highest spiritual center. Three times before I broke night's fast, amidst the refrains of my morning chant, a vision of the blue pearl of pure consciousness, your flash of light flooded my head with wonder. I know that the blue pearl, seen by sages throughout the ages, dwells in the crown of the head, inner treasure we all carry in the still soft fontanelle, smaller than a sesame seed, said to hold the whole cosmos within its glow. Serious seekers of liberation search lifelong for this vision, Blessed beyond measure, I wear our blue pearl everywhere, at times aware of its being there. Then I can see it clearly in your humble bone crown, open secret of the divine hidden within, often the last place we look. Blue jewel, blue pearl, I sleep and wake and walk with you, secreted away in the still soft fontanelle. My brow naturally bows toward you, effortless gesture of genuine respect, and constantly honors your cobalt glow. You await the brush of my dark blue eyes turned upward and inward, and those of every seeker under one world sky at the highest point in our raw diamond mines. I don't want to regret never having been lost in the light of your sapphire sphere, forever star, constant constellation of one blue sun, humble radiance containing the whole world, Blue jewel, blue pearl, goal of all knowing, divine destination. May I always see we are already steeped in the deep blue of your steady heaven. Last night, cher bleu, dear, dear blue, before I abandoned my body to a soft bed of mantra, I sent you a question message from my wood and glass worldly monk's cell, where the visionary window gives the hint of freedom. What is the end of work without end? Blue pearl in the tender crown of the head. To anyone else, this might be a riddle curtained koan, or cause for hard plastic laughter. How do I wish to wear the work I bear? As a steep ascent up a mountain made of dust that falls deeper, the harder and higher I climb? 
Use work as a sharp tool to chisel your liberation out of the marble of each minute. You remind me. In the always abrasive lotus, tireless tumbler where all our rough edges are polished. Cher Bleu, forever we begin again, here on this well-lit paper stage of spotless awareness, where it is clear I am unreal, yet feel far more than these thin lines and circles which darkened pages can contain. Twenty-five years in the past, I asked an elderly student of my guru, my other mother, what is enlightenment? After long silence, he said with half a laugh, it's not what you think. What is the end of words without end? What we seek is beyond the confines of the mind. These lines may point toward that placeless space, but never enter. Yes, I may climb an incline that falls beneath my feet, dust upon dust, when that's how I see it. I will hold my focus still within that indigo seed, Nila Bindu, the blue pearl, truer than our seemingly solid world. Your body, born for ballet, bows toward it always. You throw a window around the sun with your wild and surprising childlike laugh, which reverberates in the space of my heart and share with half a smile. Maybe enlightenment is the biggest joke of all. We run so fast after it, but we're sitting on it all along. The ground that underlines us, pause between breaths, space between two thoughts. Embrace the spaces, remain the wordless witness. The one we look so hard for is the one who is looking. Thanks very much. I'm sure you recognize the spots where I could have said Kasha or Chidakasha, but I said it in English. Shiva Sutra Dream. <clears throat> 77 sayings Shiva wrote upon the stone shown to a sage in a mystic dream. Seen when sun rose from seeming sleep over earth's ragged green and glass horizon. Maxims true and concise, charged, heart-changing words, one of which lingers on my tongue today, sweet taste, of simple wisdom, nyanam anam, knowledge is true nourishment, not rice, not bread, not fruit, not meat, but knowing the nature of sweet release, which subtly slakes our thirst for light. Paul Valéry's words add their echo to the somber and sonorous cave of my rib cage, that opaque tabernacle. Time scintillates, and the dream is knowing. All right, now sit tight, put on your seatbelts. This poem is five pages long. I think it's my masterpiece, but it's never been published. All right. <clears throat> the, and the first poem was published in the Madras Courier. The Most Precious Stone. Mahadev, Leonard Safir, I sense your spirit there. The sparks of your electric presence crackle in the room's stale radiator air and leave it charged and clear. Do you have some words to share? The earth is far from ready to hold your body cold in somber soil and stone. 
your chosen reason to exist, to live for light and right of it. Remember the teaching tale I told you 10 years ago when you returned to the ashram you'd seen in dreams since the age of five and served selflessly at 25, doing work I had no muscle for, activities of daily living, morning and evening routines, which most perform unaware of the richness there the gift of able movement. In the story, a sincere seeker and precious stone miner with no means to survive tough times is told by his guru with a gentle smile, keep going, keep going. The nearly spent seeker finds a mine of sapphire, cave of grace, that enables him to save his wife's and children's lives. Keep going, keep going, Madhava. Now that you've found the sapphire mine of your current kind of song, along with the lines of what you were taught as a freshman student of beauty who wished to frame divinity with poetry, words for the ineffable, when asked, what is the sublime? Your first workshop teacher replied, the sublime is what blows your mind. <laughs> Later, a poet professor taught you what to cut away and what to cultivate. One winter's end at 3 a.m., you sat with a close friend and talked of poetry and spirituality. You watched a dove of white fire appear in still air, fly across the room toward you, and alight on the crown of your head, burn its way down the length of your spine, throw your body to the bed, and as if goddess Saraswati danced on the tip of your tongue, made a creation poem play upon your lips. Over the face of naked waters, a nameless breath was blowing. Your pen, your, your friend penned down what you said. In poetry workshop, you were advised, your vision needs revision. Your automatic writing could use some rewriting. <laughs> you could leave this as a piece of trance channeling or go the way of literature, and I hope you do. <laughs> then 25 years of endless editing, polish the stone till it shines brightest. Enjoy the sapphire here. Exhaust the brilliant possibilities of this cave of cobalt blue air, treasure trove from which you share. At 25, your eyes grew wide about a book upon my shelves, the collected poems of Reiner Maria Rilke. You exclaimed great praise for his work, but I offended you from then till now with what I said. Yes, it is great, but one can feel the element of trying as opposed to lightning lines from dreams or enlivened words of enlightened poet saints like your beloved Mirabai or Rumi. Are you? <laughs> Am I? Years later, the graver times came for the miner once again, his family poised on the precarious cusp of hunger. The guru said with a peaceful smile, keep going, keep going. Months past his last sapphire, the seeker searched for farther caves, generous with gems to keep a few souls warm through breaths, give and take. 
That day he was surprised by joy when a mountain's rocky contours opened a new eye. He stepped inside the opening to find a cave of clustered rubies, which brought abundant days and tranquil nights. Discipline will save your life. Blaze the trail of realization, and your poetry will shimmer with Shakti, divine energy. Madhava, as I said in 2010, you can always visit the temple. Though the ashram's doors were closed, you glimpsed the gate to your inner temple, in which God sits in golden steadfastness. You witness the light behind your indigo eyes, consciousness, our true life. Find the ruby mine inside you with its deep thirst for words. You can choreograph over the page, but now include your sense of human suffering, sickness, old age, and death. Red words of need. From dust to dust, nothing is lost, but we must give the space between some warm human meaning. Poetry of this moment for which you are here for the whole unknown duration, then the mystery of existence afterward, one taste of which would arrest your breath. Let divine power move you farther. Give that ruby cave your clearest, strongest voice, student of beauty and the roots of human pain, knowing nothing binds us but inward words, false concepts. Offer the verse of turning deep within to find freedom in the world of form. Do you want your words to live long after you die? Who else could sing your song while you sleep long after dawn or when you're gone? Inspired lines can rise off the page. The spirit's upward gravity, skyward pull and change our state of consciousness. A true poet is a bridge between worlds. Build that bridge with precious gems, words of infinite resonance. You remember what I shared after the ruby mine's richness had exhausted all its usefulness, the student's hair a cloud of gray. The grateful miner went again to sit in his guru's palpable peace, intoxicating presence. Again, the wisdom always true for all of us who must flow with streams of change through a sweet and gentle smile. The sage firmly whispered, keep going, keep going going. With a refreshed spirit, the miner left and read the road ahead of him as an exquisite line of scripture. Who knew what might be written on the rugged mountain's edge? In whichever way they can, all of nature's children dance and climb along the ragged rim of earth, holding on to nothing but the breath which held them first. You're a dancer by birth, I told you at 25, after asking, what's it like to run? Intuition's dowsing rod led the diligent disciple to a cave dotted with diamonds. When you are strong enough to keep your heart crystal clear, then you can find poetry's diamond mine if you meet all three 
prerequisites. Words can dance at your command. Your heart can sing of suffering. And when you are strong enough to surrender, give the ghost a voice. Learn the language of light. I gave up suffering long ago. Inside each one of us, there is a place of sublime knowledge. And anyone who enters it becomes a true poet without having to have a degree. Diamond minds of divine words can be humbly carried from there into the darkened world. The true jewels of the heart's heart call to all of us. Listen closely to silence, student of light. A quiet mind can hear the highest song. Once I recited a poetic gem from the back of the wheelchair van, which you found profound, though so exquisite, you could not take a snapshot of it with your mind. And I, too, surrendered it to time. You tasted true astonishment and asked if I had written it. Forever remember what I said. Not writing, but reading the heart of God. All your trying cannot take you far. Wake up to who you truly are. And let us come back to the present moment. All right, here we are. And I wanted to read a few words from my uh, my funny book of poems to pigeons and plants, humble doves. And uh, let's see the uh, eternal ritual of water drinking. All right. <clears throat> the secret pigeons ball. Of all the unbidden pigeons in this half-hidden park, Dave's fave is different. She refuses to wear their scarf of blue and green tradition. She models the color coffee ice cream. Free to be alone and unbothered, crooning tones of cool. Does she know she's odd? Dressed up for some private event, a secret pigeon's ball, where several colors of feeling mingle and merge into brown. Play-Doh in my eight-year-old hands, when I nabbed the new year in my mind, tall gold neon 1979 sign and got into time's toy train to race faster, ever faster, into Paris proper, where, in an overlooked park, a smart, illiterate pigeon, quite quiet, unaware of my stare, washes her long wing feathers in a fountain of sunshine. The essence of fashion is feeling good looking. <laughs> Every girl crazy about a sharp dressed man. All right, we're going to go back <laughs> to the screen and see what happens there. Hello, Ganesh, among the stars. Okay. We'll finish with uh, a few of my. Uh, lines from actual dreams. I have uh, over 400 pages of poetry from dreams that I've uh, written down. and Making three volumes of 33 chapters each and each chapter with 33 dream lines. And this, I, I had this line after I saw the word unmesha. So for those who don't know, a flashing forth. 
a flashing forth of stars, and it all began. Stars accept what dies. Are there any other meanings for sublime? <laughs> what blows your mind is mighty fine. Yes, that's what happens when you hide behind a stone. Your limited offering is gone in the morning. My long lost lover is in my soul. Your illusions too, you draw from the sacred place. What will unfold, what takes shape before us, that which will come to us is not to be guessed. It connects to the floor, <laughs> but you could lay it on the moon. <laughs> Sounds like a great plant, huge. That's what intelligence would say. We need to talk to each other. <laughs> wow, after COVID? Human speech, wow, connection. It's okay. I get it all the time. Artists are often mistaken for creative Cowards. The town gave us the honor of oblivion. <laughs> uh, the things that we forget. Some magic went by, and over the years, it got stronger. I don't know anyone else who's veering back toward human interaction. <laughs> Uh, these past few years. Death. Hmm. I should know death. I guess I'm too happy now. I stayed to watch one life. <laughs> I watched my own as it passed on by. He ran across the street to find himself. <laughs> well, there I am again. She's changing face every day. Just a little coffee in a paper cup with a few sweet words to color it as you like. It's beautiful, but there's no rainbow, no island, no hunger, no rescue. <laughs> it's expecting an adventure film. We assembled all the night's notes, removed the moonlight, and there is nothing now blocking this day. It's a perfect game that captures like a reality. Embrace the quiet, let it touch your ears. It's hard to see but it's the one way free. So I traveled in time. I opened the door. It's the easiest way of crossing the floor. Of the poets, nine out of 10 are gone. What remains is their song. In our fictitious tents, we are camped out here in the field of meaning. <laughs> Where's that, Dave? That's the blue card I was given in my dreams. <laughs> Glad I kept that card. Here's some complimentary modesty. <laughs> you seem a long way off yourself. Yep, still. Carrying that big ego. Her name was drawn from nothingness and wears a silence as its dress. You'll need pain and art to truly learn and show you where skyscrapers really come from. It strikes me that justice 19 years after the fact, is being born. 
I don't expect any justice in America ever. His lover was donated to him <laughs> by science. <laughs> it's not that he donated any organs. His lover was donated to him. Love is the last and first thing. His letter to the editor is simple silence. <laughs> That's 33 dream lines, my friends. And uh, here we are. Thanks a million to you, Prasanaji. Thanks, everybody, for listening. How absolutely beautiful to have your quiet ears. Thank you very much.